The Austrian school is a school of economic thought that is based on the concept of methodological individualism, that social phenomena result from the motivations and actions of individuals. It originated in the late 19th and early 20th century Vienna with the work of Karl Menger, Eugen Bohm von Barwick, Friedrich von Wieser, and others. It was methodologically opposed to the Prussian historical school. Current-day economists working in this tradition are located in many different countries, but their work is referred to as Austrian economics. Among the theoretical contributions of the early years of the Austrian school are the subjective theory of value, marginalism in price theory, and the formulation of the economic calculation problem, each of which has become an accepted part of mainstream economics. Many economists are critical of the current-day Austrian school and consider its rejection of econometrics and aggregate macroeconomic analysis to be outside of mainstream economic theory, or heterodox. Austrians are likewise critical of mainstream economics. Although the Austrian school has been considered heterodox since the late 1930s, it began to attract renewed academic and public interest starting in the 1970s. Methodology The Austrian school theorizes that the subjective choices of individuals including individual knowledge, time, expectation, and other subjective factors, cause all economic phenomena. Austrians seek to understand economy by examining the social ramifications of individual choice, an approach called methodological individualism. It differs from other schools of economic thought, which have focused on aggregate variables, equilibrium analysis, and societal groups rather than individuals. In the 20th and 21st centuries, Economists with a methodological lineage to the early Austrian school developed many diverse approaches and theoretical orientations. For example, in 1949, Ludwig von Mises organized his version of the subjectivist approach, which he called praxeology, in a book published in English as Human Action. In it, Mises stated that praxeology could be used to deduce a priori theoretical economic truths and that deductive economic thought experiments could yield conclusions which follow irrefutably from the underlying assumptions. He claimed conclusions could not be inferred from empirical observation or statistical analysis and argued against the use of probabilities in economic models. Since Mrs. Time, some Austrian thinkers have accepted his praxeological approach, while others have adopted alternative methodologies. For example, Fritz Machlup, Friedrich Hayek, and others, did not take Mrs. Strong a priori approach to economics. Ludwig Lachmann, a radical subjectivist, also largely rejected Mrs. formulation of praxeology in favor of the Verstehender method articulated by Max Weber. In the 20th century, various Austrians incorporated models and mathematics into their analysis. Austrian economist Stephen Horwitz argued in 2000 that Austrian methodology is consistent with macroeconomics and that Austrian macroeconomics can be expressed in terms of microeconomic foundations. Austrian economist Roger Garrison claims that Austrian macroeconomic theory can be correctly expressed in terms of diagrammatic models. In 1944, Austrian economist Oskar Morgenstern presented a rigorous schematization of an ordinal utility function in theory of games and economic behavior. Fundamental tenets Fritz Machlup listed the typical views of Austrian economic thinking, methodological individualism. In the explanation of economic phenomena we have to go back to the actions of individuals, groups or collectives cannot act except through the actions of individual members. Methodological subjectivism. In the explanation of economic phenomena we have to go back to judgments and choices made by individuals on the basis of whatever knowledge they have, or believe to have and whatever expectations they entertain regarding external developments and especially the perceived consequences of their own intended actions, tastes and preferences. Subjective valuations of goods and services determine the demand for them so that their prices are influenced by consumers. 
Opportunity costs. The costs with which producers and other economic actors calculate reflect the alternative opportunities that must be foregone, as productive services are employed for one purpose. All alternative uses have to be sacrificed. Marginalism. In all economic designs, the values, costs, revenues, productivity, etc., are determined by the significance of the last unit added to or subtracted from the total time structure of production and consumption. Decisions to save reflect time preferences regarding consumption in the immediate, distant, or indefinite future, and investments are made in view of larger outputs expected to be obtained if more time-taking production processes are undertaken. Two important tenets held by the Misesian branch of Austrian economics may also be added to the list. Consumer sovereignty. The influence consumers have on the effective demand for goods and services and through the prices which result in free competitive markets on the production plans of producers and investors is not merely a hard fact but also an important objective, attainable only by complete avoidance of governmental interference with the markets and of restrictions on the freedom of sellers and buyers to follow their own judgment regarding quantities qualities, and prices of products and services. Political individualism. Only when individuals are given full economic freedom will it be possible to secure political and moral freedom. Restrictions on economic freedom lead, sooner or later, to an extension of the coercive activities of the state into the political domain, undermining and eventually destroying the essential individual liberties which the capitalistic societies were able to attain in the 19th century. Contributions to Economic Thought Opportunity Cost The Opportunity Cost Doctrine was first explicitly formulated by the Austrian economist Friedrich von Wieser in the late 19th century. Opportunity cost is the cost of any activity measured in terms of the value of the next best alternative foregone. It is the sacrifice related to the second best choice available to someone, or group, who has picked among several mutually exclusive choices. The notion of opportunity cost plays a crucial part in ensuring that resources are used efficiently. Capital and interest The Austrian theory of capital and interest was first developed by Eugen Bohm von Barwerk. Bohm Barwerk's theory was a response to Marx's labor theory of value and capital. Bohm Barwerk's theory attacked the viability of the labor theory of value in the light of the transformation problem. His conception of interest countered Marx's exploitation theory. Marx famously argued that capitalists exploit workers by paying them less than the fruits of their labor self or. Bohm Barwick countered this claim by invoking the concept of time preference to demonstrate that everyone values present consumption more than future consumption, and therefore that a difference between the salary laborers are paid in the present and the price for which the goods they produce are later sold, need not be exploitative. Bohm Barwick's theory equates capital intensity with the degree of roundaboutness of production processes. Bohm Barwick also argued that the law of marginal utility necessarily implies the classical law of costs. Some Austrian economists therefore entirely reject the notion that interest rates are affected by liquidity preference. Inflation in Mises' definition, inflation is an increase in the supply of money. In theoretical investigation there is only one meaning that can rationally be attached to the expression inflation, an increase in the quantity of money, that is not offset by a corresponding increase in the need for money, so that a fall in the objective exchange value of money must occur. Hayek pointed out that inflationary stimulation exploits the lag between an increase in money supply and the consequent increase in the prices of goods and services. And since any inflation, however modest at first, can help employment only so long as it accelerates, adopted as a means of reducing unemployment, it will do so for any length of time only while it accelerates. Mild steady inflation cannot help, it can lead only to outright inflation. That inflation at a constant rate soon ceases to have any stimulating effect, and in the end merely leaves us with a backlog of delayed adaptations. 
is the conclusive argument against the mild inflation represented as beneficial even in standard economics textbooks. Economic calculation problem The economic calculation problem refers to a criticism of socialism which was first stated by Max Weber in 1920. Mises subsequently discussed Weber's idea with his student Friedrich Hayek, who developed it in various works including The Road to Serfdom. The problem concerns the means by which resources are allocated and distributed in an economy. Austrian theory emphasizes the organizing power of markets. Hayek stated that market prices reflect information, the totality of which is not known to any single individual, which determines the allocation of resources in an economy. Because socialist systems lack the individual incentives and price discovery processes by which individuals act on their personal information, Hayek argued that socialist economic planners lack all of the knowledge required to make optimal decisions. Those who agree with this criticism view it as a refutation of socialism showing that socialism is not a viable or sustainable form of economic organization. The debate rose to prominence in the 1920s and 1930s, and that specific period of the debate has come to be known by historians of economic thought as the socialist calculation debate. Mises argued in a 1920 essay, Economic Calculation in the Socialist Commonwealth, that the pricing systems in socialist economies were necessarily deficient because if government owned the means of production, then no prices could be obtained for capital goods as they were merely internal transfers of goods in a socialist system and not objects of exchange, unlike final goods. Therefore, they were unpriced and hence the system would be necessarily inefficient since the central planners would not know how to allocate the available resources efficiently. This led him to write that rational economic activity is impossible in a socialist commonwealth business cycles. The Austrian theory of the business cycle focuses on banks' issuance of credit as the cause of economic fluctuations. Although later elaborated by Hayek and others, the theory was first set forth by Mises, who believed that banks extend credit at artificially low interest rates, causing businesses to invest in relatively roundabout production processes. Mises stated that this led to a misallocation of resources which he called malinvestment. According to the theory, malinvestment is induced by banks' excessive and unsustainable expansion of credit to businesses. Businesses borrow at unsustainably low interest rates and overinvest in capital-intensive production processes, which in turn leads to a diversion of investment from consumer goods industries to capital goods industries. Austrians contend that this shift is unsustainable and must eventually be reversed and that the readjustment process will be more violent and disruptive the longer the putative malinvestment in capital goods industries continues. According to the Austrian view, the proportion of income allocated to consumption rather than saving is determined by the interest rate and people's time preference, which is the degree to which they prefer present to future satisfactions. According to this view, the pure interest rate is determined by the time preferences of the individuals in society. If the market rate of interest offered by banks is set lower than this, business borrowing will be excessive and will be allocated to malinvestment. Newly extended credit thus malinvested will circulate from the business borrowers to the factors of production, landowners, capital goods producers, and capital goods workers. Austrians state that, because individuals' time preferences have not changed, the market will tend to re-establish the old proportions between current and future production. Depositors will tend to remove cash from the banking system and spend it. Banks will then ask their borrowers for repayment, and the excessive capital goods will be liquidated at lower prices to retire the now unprofitable loans role of government disputed according to Mises, central banks enable the commercial banks to fund loans at artificially low interest rates, thereby inducing an unsustainable expansion of bank credit and impeding any subsequent contraction. Friedrich Hayek disagreed. Prior to the 1970s, 
Hayek did not favor laissez-faire in banking and said that a freely competitive banking industry tends to be endogenously destabilizing in pro-cyclical, mimicking the effects which Rothbard attributed to central bank policy. Hayek stated that the need for central banking control was inescapable.